Oh my goodness. What's going on in America? What's going on in Ghana? Yes, yes, the golden child. Yes. <laughs> I mean, today. Today as in your time. I wonder how different my life would be if it was reversed. As you always say. <laughs> Welcome to Sisters Oceans Closer. Today I join my sister who was born and raised in Ghana, which is located in West Africa. Ghana is about 15,000 square miles larger than Nebraska, and Ghana has a population of 31 million as of 2020. The country was formerly known as the Gold Coast, and it's still one of the biggest producers of cocoa beans, the primary ingredient of chocolate. My name is Crystal, and I was born in New York, but raised in Ghana until I came to Nebraska when I was eight years old. My sister, Evelyn, was born and raised in Ghana her whole life. For this podcast, we'll be discussing perspectives as people who grew up in different continents. Without further ado, let's get started. All right. Thanks for joining me, sis. What's your name for those who have no idea? <laughs> okay, my name is Evelyn. Yeah. Do I need to go by the full name? No, it's fine. We'll keep it casual. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, basically, I wanted to have you here to talk to you about our perspectives on money. It's, okay. it's something that I always think about because... Our conversations, when I tell you how much something is or I'm complaining, you'll be like, Crystal, that is wealth in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's just jump in. I know, right? For example, um, when I told you my rent would go up to almost $1,000, it, it'd go up to nine fifty. Nine hundred fifty dollars. Um, wow! <laughs> <laughs> and it's so is funny. Well, but is it just is it for a month or a year? For a month. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. <laughs> I okay. mean, how much is how much how many months does nine hundred fifty dollars for you? Crystal, that, that, uh, that's a lot of money. Okay, let me convert it to cities and see. Then maybe I, I'll be able to tell um, how much, uh, how, it, how many months it is. I, I'm just doing a um, rough estimate. It might be almost $4,000. Oh, oh my four, th- four cities. $900 is 5,400 Ghana cities per year. So it's somebody's, the least rent you can get is 150 Ghana cities in Ghana. And I'll say um, it's somebody's more than two years rent in Ghana. Mm. Yeah. You let me use mine as an example. Mine is 250 Ghana cities. So it's almost a two years. <laughs> almost a two years rent. Wow. Hmm. Honestly, oh gosh. That's kind oh, of. Yeah, saying the rent here is still killing, but it seems your, your end hmm, is it's really serious. It's really serious. I, I don't know, maybe. Um, okay. It's just funny. It is. It's just funny how we cry about rent, but when you go to the other side, people are really suffering a lot to also pay rent. But I think we don't, okay, when it comes to work and salary and all those kind of stuff, we don't get the money, that kind of money. Mm-hmm. Just imagine, okay, um, I'm paying for rent, um, I'm paying for groceries, I'm paying for electricity, electricity bills, life bills, and petty, petty bills. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, I don't get a salary that I don't, I, I, I really deserve a meager, I get a meager salary at the end of the day, definitely will complain. But with you guys, I think there are a lot of job opportunities and they pay you guys well. 
So I think you 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 can pay for the rent, but ours, Crystal, is really a different ball game. Even you work in Numpo, they even want you to work for free, or even at the end of the day, Numpo, you are not even giving what you were promised that you you you, you um, they'll give you. So it makes everything difficult here. The false promises when you get hired over there, and even here sometimes. And when they don't pay you what they said they would, like, that's just criminal. But that's another conversation. <laughs> that is, like, yeah, that one. robbery on the worst level. So, <laughs> anyway, I often think about it because when we talk about money, it's like, it's all relative. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny that you guys want to come to America to have the job opportunities. And trust me, there are a whole lot of people who are trying to, even if it's less with their last penny or their last savings, they'll still try and come, like, go outside the country. Because there you get better opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, let's put this one aside. If the person gets there, just imagine... We did like a year or two, and if the person is, at least if the person gets a, a, a good job over there, even if it's not really a good job, this menial, menial job in, in America, I, I, I guess that it really um, pays a lot. Yeah, in yeah, comparison. It's more in someone who is sitting at the office in Ghana here. Mm-hmm. So the person would rather choose that one, that option, make a lot of money, come home and settle. Yeah. <laughs> I know that money is very hard to come by and all those kind of stuff. But Crystal, trust me, when it comes to this place, Ghana, mm-hmm. it's very serious. They, they, you know, the rich keeps on getting rich. And the poor... It's the same uh, story here. <laughs> so Crystal, you guys... You know, I, I don't know. I have, you, you guys have a better opportunity. Yeah, Seriously. for sure. You guys have a better opportunity. Yeah. Just imagine someone who is cleaning in America. Look at you guys, they pay you in hours, right? Mm-hmm. Or something, yeah. Here, at the end of the day, the person doing the cleaning job over there receives more than someone who is even sitting in an AC. Here. In Ghana, someone who is wearing suits and goes to work, sits in his office, and receives something that hmm, we all just imagine. Like someone outside the boss will be like, "Oh, this guy with a suit and tie and everything. Oh, he really receives a lot. Forget his crystal. Mm-hmm. Someone being cleaning in America is even collects more than him." That's why I like talking to you about this. You know. It, anytime I hate my job, I'm like, okay, well, at least they they have to pay me. <laughs> at least, you know, I can afford some things, but I don't know. I still, I still think it's crazy when we talk about how much is not enough for us versus like how much would be enough for you. It's, it just makes me realize how all of this, like how rent and, you know, the price of things, it's all just very artificial. It's like, who comes up with yeah. this? Hmm. And even you guys are even lucky. You guys can pay monthly when it comes to rent. But ours, you have to pay two or three years or even four sometimes in advance. Just imagine, where is that person going to get all this bulk money from? Yeah. It's like collect. you have to have Even connections. Though, when you go to the rent control and whatever, they, they, they are like, oh, landlords or landladies to collect six months rent. But, first of all, still they are collecting the two years and the... If someone collects one year, then it means the person is showing you mercy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> one year I'm putting, you wouldn't even get it will be very difficult 
for you to get. Yeah. Hmm. Just imagine someone um, going to look for all this money in bulk and give it to you just to stay in your house. Hmm. You how to the money in bulk you are not even getting. You don't even deserve what you are even getting. The kind of work that you put in your work, oh, the kind of energy and everything. Hmm. The money, you don't even deserve the money at the end of the day because it's so small as compared to the energy you put in, your sweat, everything. Yeah, it's like... Sometimes it really becomes annoying, Crystal. Yeah. Sometimes it really, really becomes annoying. It makes me think of how a lot of farmers here are paid. <laughs> Some of them, they work so hard and they still have so much debt yes. to pay off. And it's like the hard workers, you know, the ones who allow us to survive, they don't get paid. Mm -hmm. Like we call them essential here, but they don't get paid as if they are. And I think the oh. whole system is just, it's really messed up. <laughs> okay, so that is, that is how it is here too. Just imagine, just recently the cocoa farmers were, they were complaining so bitterly. Without the farmers, you, the person sitting at the top, wouldn't really get your money or you wouldn't even get to the position that you are without the farmers. At the end of the day, scholarship goes to those at the top, their kids. Meanwhile, to those suffering in the farm, earns little and you give no scholarship to their children. The good stuff do not come to them, but the good stuff goes to those at the top, those who don't really even need it the most. They already have the money, they already have the resources. So why, why shouldn't you look at those down there? Well, <laughs> do you see why? Uh, some people in the U.S., they're trying to become expats. They want to move to Ghana because it's going to be more affordable. I mean, here, the poverty level is wealth over there. It's like, <laughs> talk about upward mobility. I mean, for real. I mean, you just illustrated how rent like you can build a, buy a house build it and buy it with the whatever meager whatever we think is a meager wage here and so it's just like a lot of people are trying to move out of the state maybe not to ghana but they're trying to go south america or even europe mm. or you know to Africa. It's like, hmm. it's so funny that, because I saw this trend online and people are, people here, they, they don't think it's an American dream. They're trying to go somewhere else for the dream, mm. you know, because somewhere else <laughs> is going to be more affordable. Mm. And then, trust me, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, you go on. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it's a good plan if you live out of the country to come work maybe for a year or two, save up, and then, you know, like, have start a foundation uh, elsewhere. I think it's just a good plan. Mm -hmm. Well, for that one, it's, 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 it's really a good thing. Um, those outside... Um, Ghana, especially those in America and Europe and other stuff, really like coming to Ghana because honestly, Crystal is way cheaper for them. Way cheaper. I remember an uncle of ours um, married one lady, um, black American lady from US. When she and her daughter came to Ghana, they were like, Ghana is way three times cheaper than US. Mm -hmm. just, ima just imagine this. Meanwhile, so we are rather struggling. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry? You're like, what is she talking about? <laughs> yes. What is she talking about? 
three times cheaper. Hey, as compared to America. I was like, okay, so I guess you're really living your dream here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't tell her now, by the way. <laughs> I would I have. About, I was just saying this in my head. Just imagine, Crystal. Oh, yeah. Hmm. People in America are I trying mean, to find the American dream. Travel outside the country and um, seek for greener pastures, come home with their money, establish themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, really, it's, it's really a good thing. It's really a good thing. Hmm. Yeah. But coming here is like a, its own battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. Yeah. But I just hope uh, when the expats, you know, go to where the pastures are greener, we don't raise the the prices, you know, because the landlords, the people who are already there realize, oh, we can charge them even more because their currency is like four times compared to mine, you know, and then it screws everybody yeah. over. And do you know what is happening now? What? Right now, they know experts are really chipping in. So do you know what they do? Right now, there are some people who charge in dollars and euros and pounds. <sighs> in Ghana, while we are in Ghana, people charging other currencies. Just imagine them. I mean, it makes sense to them. Profit, profit, you know? I know, but you see them became that. I know. They all they need to do is yeah, just, you know. Maybe. Yeah. But to them, hmm. they they they're taking care of themselves, you know. I know, but Crystal, it's serious. And you know, it doesn't apply to those outside the country. Even if okay, let's say um you go there and that building is for rent and it's like it's going for like let's say um thousand dollars a month crystal trust me when a Ghanaian comes there it's the same price they'll give her him or her thousand dollars the fact that they the thing is they want to achieve that money they want to get that money their targets or whatever but there should be some you know like rules. A Ghanaian living in Ghana, working in Ghana, doing everything here, mm-hmm. and you're still charging dollars. Please. That's There's just a whole lot cruel. of companies doing this, a whole lot of um, real estate developers and other places doing this, charging in other currencies. And when you tell them, oh, you know, the dollar is really rising and things are becoming this and this and that, excuse me. <laughs> hmm. The dollar is really rising, but it's benefiting you. Yeah, and that's the whole point. Because I'm, I'm trying to say, like, from a business perspective, it's what you need to do. You have to charge people their own currency to stay hmm. kind of, to make the most profit. And that's what I'm, <laughs> that's the part that <laughs> upsets me because it's going to affect locals. And I'm just, every time I hear these kinds of stories, it makes me just shake my head. (laughs) Well, hmm. that is how, that is what it is now. That is what it is now. hmm. I mean, I think it should be. The rate is going much higher, so you have to charge in different currencies. Mm Mm-hmm. But I mean, this is this is only the start of this conversation. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about it because you and I were we're passionate about it. And thank you, yeah. Thank you for <laughs> taking the time, yeah. taking the energy. You're really welcome, every day. Yeah. You're welcome. I I can't wait for our, our second podcast. And yeah. But you have a good one. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for taking off with us. I wish you the best wherever you are. Until next time. Bye.